Buenos dias, good morning, and welcome to the Big Brave Broadcast. My name is Sadell Chase Rosario, but you can call me your caring correspondent, Chase, and I'm here to tell you that what we have on the inside can make the world a better place. I see you. And I know that you have what it takes to think big and be brave. Each episode, we will meet strong people, learn powerful words, and practice new skills so that you can choose your own path and tell your own story. Ooh, I'm so excited. Let's get our brains ready to read. Rise and revolutionize. And now for today's top story. Thanks, Correspondent Chase. Welcome to today's top story. Today, we're going to meet a woman by the name of Emma Teneyuka. Now, she used her voice to advocate for others. Advocate is a big fancy word that means helping those who can't help themselves. But I don't want to tell you guys too much about it. Let's go to the professor. And go. Bienvenue, Hush Cousins. I am the professor. Welcome back to those of you that have been here before. And at a certain point, I've got to make sure Detective Ortiz understands the Rocky series isn't that good. It's the same movie seven times. Anyway, for today's show, I wanted to know what would you guys do with two hours? Maybe you get some candy, maybe a soda, a bag of chips, play your cards right. Maybe you can get two or three of those things. But what if I told you that's all you had for the week? Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty sure I can't get to the end of this episode without spending at least $2, let alone the end of the week. So when that's all workers got paid, how did any of that change for them? In steps, Emma Tenayunka. Who's that, you ask? Only one place to talk about it. To the Thunderdome! Here we are in the Thunderdome, but remember, shh, secret. Now, you guys know what comes next because second verse, same as the first. So, before we get to growing our big brains, say it with me now. I can learn big brave things. Let's go. Emma Tenayunka was born in San Antonio in a family of 11 people. She lived with her grandparents just to try and help her parents out because they were all growing up and living under the Great Depression. Now, the Great Depression, this was a time during the 1930s, so about 100 years ago at this point, where a lot of people struggled with money. So as Tenayunka was growing up early on, all around her, she saw and knew what it was like to need money. So she helped fight because she knew it wasn't right. The first time she was arrested was when she was 16. Notice how I said the first time We'll get to that here more in a second. So when she was arrested the first time when she was 16, it was because workers in one company were being paid really low and it wasn't really safe. Perhaps what she's best known for was a pecan sheller strike in 1938. Now, at that point, she brought together 12,000 workers whose job it was to take the pecans out of their shells. They were really paid poorly, even for the time, getting paid just six cents per pound, and in factories that were not safe at all. After 37 days of that strike, the owners agreed to pay everybody more than what they were getting. So it was considered a win. Tenayuka continued to fight for these things, for these workers and others, and the things that she fought for back then are the same things that we look at now and can look at and say, yeah, well, of course everybody should have it. Quote time, folks. Now, remember, quote's just something somebody said. In this case, for Tenayuka, she said, and I quote, I was arrested a number of times. I don't think I was exactly fearful. I never thought in terms of fear. I thought in terms of justice. Now, what does that mean? Quite simply, yes, she's been arrested, but in her mind, it was worth it. In her mind, if she needed to get arrested, to make the lives of these workers better, then of course she'd do it again. Tanayuka saw something wrong and worked on making it better for everybody. 
it's a point that you see in a lot of people that we've talked about in this space. You could throw Cesar Chavez in there, Dolores Huerta in there too. Even later on with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in the 1960s, and certainly more people today. But they're all working under the same idea. Even if I'm okay, I can be even better if I help you out. Now, if you'll excuse me, Grandmother Nature is shouting over here about being annoyed by something. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to go see if I can help her out. Wow, we learned so much about Emma Teneyuka. But I wonder how she was feeling. Who can we go to to tell us how she was feeling? That's right, Detective Ortiz. And now to Detective Ortiz. So glad I found you. We have a problem. We need to figure out how Emma Tenayuka felt. Well, in order to find out how, detectives like me ask five questions. Who, what, when, where, and why. Oh, what's the first question? Who did we learn about? Who is the narrative about? You found who? Give me a jumping jack. One. Wait, what's the next question? Exactly. What did they do? Oh. What did they do? You found what? Now give me two jumping jacks. One, two. All right. What's it time for now? Exactly. When in time did this take place? Oh. When in time did they create change? You fell when? Now give me three jumping jacks. One, two, three. Whoo! Where do you go from here? Exactly. Where did this take place? Oh. Where did their story take place? You fell where? Give me four jumping jacks. One, two, three, four. Oh, why can't I remember the last question? Exactly. Why did they say it with me? Revolutionize. Why? Did they revolutionize? You fell why? Give me five! No, Miss Baker, five jumping jacks! Wow. One, two, three, four, five. Woo! Wait, I see a letter! I see a letter! Y'all know what letter this makes? Exactly an H. An H for how? For how Emma Tenayuga was feeling. Huh. Great job, junior detectives. You guys found the feelings word. You found the word annoyed. Hmm. I don't know what that word means. Who can we go to to tell us what that word means? That's right, Grandmother Nature. And now to Grandmother Nature with the feelings words weather. Whether you're feeling happy or whether you're feeling sad, whether you feel surprised or whether you're feeling mad, whatever the weather, we'll face it together, however you're feeling today. Hi guys, and welcome to the Feeling Words Weather. I'm your grandmother nature, and I'm, well, well, frankly, I'm annoyed. I just got back from the pool. I know it's the middle of winter, but sometimes I like to go for a swim at the local YMCA. And guess what? The kids got my hair wet. 
it takes me a long time to get my hair to look as gorgeous as it does right now. And they were just splashing and splashing when it was adult swim. It was so annoying. Have you ever felt annoyed? Yeah, doesn't feel too good. Wait, what? That was the word you found with the tens and more teeth? There you go, annoyed. Let's talk about it. When you feel annoyed, it's like something's really bothering you. Like something just kind of gets under your skin. Like something just poking at you. When you feel annoyed, sometimes your little brothers and sisters make you feel annoyed. It's like, just stop already. <sighs> really just rub you the wrong way. Well, honestly, I feel a little bit better talking to you guys about it. But let me tell you, it just really mm, annoyed me so much when they were just splashing. <sighs> Let's figure out which category it goes in. Bing! Right there in living color. Is it a sad word? Is it a mad word? Is it a scared word? Is it a joyful word? Is it a powerful word? Or is it a peaceful word? What do you think? What's that? Yes, it's a mad word. When you're annoyed, you're just mad. Sometimes you get annoyed by little things. I don't know, like your parents telling you to clean your room. Or like when people talk with their mouth full. Oh my goodness, that's the worst. Other times you get annoyed by bigger things. I don't know, like maybe the fact that we still are in this quarantine that's kind of annoying sometimes you know little spaces things get annoying i feel you guys i do well now that you know what annoyed means sometimes when you're feeling annoyed it helps to tell someone so repeat after me i feel annoyed and then maybe you can tell somebody and maybe they can give you some strategies <gasps> or some social skills mm. I think we should go to Coach Fran while well, my hair dries. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Thanks, Grandmother Nature. You know, the next time that I'm feeling annoyed, instead of just being upset, I think I'll compromise and tell someone I feel annoyed. Wait a minute, compromise? That sounds like a social skill. But who can we go to to teach us about social skills? That's right, Coach Fran. <clears throat> And now to Coach Fran with Social Skills Sports. Let's get ready to learn skills. Social skills. I said to stop, take a breath. I said to stop, take a breath. I said to think, what's my plan? I said to think, what's my plan? I said to stop, take a breath, then think. What's my plan? I said to stop, take a breath, then think. What's my plan? Uh-huh, uh-huh, all right, all right. Now I've got it, now I've got it. Here we go, here we go. Hiya, sports fans, this is Coach Fran, and I'm a fan of having a plan. Got lots of plans for the big game, but we're not talking about games. We're talking about life, and you need social skills for life. Well, sports fans, I know it is the holiday season, and there was a lot of gift giving. Well, I gave my nieces and nephews some toys, and one of the toys I gave them was Legos. Big, beautiful, bright, shiny box of Legos. I thought they were going to be so excited that they were going to play together, but no, they started fighting. They were throwing the Legos at each other. Legos were flying around. I even stepped on a Lego towards the end. Said something I didn't want to say. Legos hurt. Anyway, they needed to use the skill of compromise. So I sat them down and I told them the strategy. Let's put it up on the screen so you can see it. Right there, compromise. How to find a solution that both people agree on. Step one, stop and think how can we both get what we want now sports fans i know i'm always talking about my teams you got to think about you and the other person together like you're part of a team trying to get to the same goal that's the first step step two you need to listen to what they want everyone likes to be heard so i told my niece to tell my nephew 
what do you want? And I had the other one listen. She said, I want to build a fairy princess castle. And he listened. Step three, say what you want. Now I had my nephew tell my niece, what do you want? And he said, I want to build a dragon. All right. The third step is talk about a way that you can agree. Here's some strategies that Coach Fran recommends. One, try using a timer to take turns. So let's say you want to do two totally different things and they don't really kind of go together. You can use a timer. You can do rock, paper, scissors, shoot, or you can flip a coin to figure out who gets the timer first. Then you set the timer for five minutes. One person gets the toy for five minutes. When the timer goes off, you take turns. Very effective strategy. The next thing you can try doing is sharing or working together. And that's what I told my niece and nephew. I said, hey, you know what? Why don't you build the fairy princess castle? And why don't you build the dragon on the outside? You can have the dragon come up to the fairy princess castle and you can make sure that the castle is strong enough to not let the dragon in. There you go. Now you're both playing with the Legos and you can play together. It worked out very well. Unfortunately, I had to be the dragon. Now, the last thing you can do is ask for help together. So let's say you just can't figure out a way. You tried taking turns. You tried working together and it's not working. Instead of blaming each other and saying it was her fault or his fault or anybody, you can go to an adult and ask for help together. Well, sports fans, I hope that you had a wonderful holiday and I hope that you compromise with the toys that you got and you learn how to play with them in a way that everybody can get along. Well, I'll see you next time. Thanks, Coach Fran. You know, compromising sounds like a win-win for everybody. See what I did there? Win-win, Coach Fran. Well, that's all the time I have with you guys today. But remember that you have the power to chase your dreams and change the world. And now to Jaquan Ortiz to tell us what we've learned today. Hello, I'm Jaquan Ortiz. And now it's time for... What did we learn today? Today we met Emma Tenayuka. And we learned a new word. Annoyed. Say it with me. I feel annoyed. I feel annoyed every time I talk to the professor. <laughs> and we have a new social skill. Compromise. When you compromise, everybody wins. Well, that's all for now. But just remember to think big and be brave. Bye.